federal government has invoked the Emergencies Act. A small fringe minority holding unacceptable uh, views uh, that they are expressing. Any medical uh, uh, vaccine, whatever, it should be a personal choice. We will remain peaceful, but planted on Parliament Hill until the mandates are decisively ended. We're not suspending fundamental rights or overriding the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. The Constitution of this nation, not the Emergency Act, the Constitution of this nation is the supreme law of Canada. The truckers are not insensitive to the fact that they are in a city, that they're in a city where there are citizens who also have rights and freedoms, and that they must be respected. At the same time, it's the truckers' rights must be uh, respected. This is, again, a government overreach. We don't do these kind of things in, in Canada. We engage in dialogue. And it's my understanding that the government of Canada has not reached out once to the truckers since they have arrived in this capital city. We are not limiting people's freedom of speech. We are not limiting freedom of peaceful assembly. We are not preventing people from exercising their right to protest legally. The right to peaceful protest is sacrosanct to our nation. If that principle is abandoned, the government will reveal itself as a true tyranny and it will lose all of its credibility. You didn't see any evidence in the intelligence of espionage or in support of espionage. Is that correct? That's correct. The activities within or relating to Canada directed toward or in support of the threat of a use of acts of serious violence against persons for the purpose of achieving a political, religious, or ideological objective within Canada or a foreign state. I'm aware of no intelligence that was produced that would support concern in that regard. So you and Vincent Kersey have given direct standing to challenge the proclamation regulations and economic order. So what transpired, the decision given out yesterday, again, was a huge one. Justice Mosley saying, I have concluded that the decision to issue the proclamation does not bear the hallmarks of reasonableness, justification, transparency, and intelligibility, and was not justified in relation to the relevant factual and legal constraints that were required to be taken into consideration. Ultimately, there was no national emergency justifying the invocation of the Emergencies Act. It's an incredible jubilant time right now for Canadian history. Um, what does this mean, this decision for Canadians going forward? Well, you know, it, it gives Canadians vindication that, you know, standing up, uh, you know, in support of your uh, charter rights and freedoms is worthwhile. I mean, we've had some pretty dark days in the past three years. And for this decision to come forward, especially now, um, gives renewed hope to every Canadian that was involved and thought that their country is lost. And now we know we, with a glimmer of hope that we're going to win this. And, you know, that hopefully the, the you know, the courts, should they appeal this, you know, it, it, we're not based on political opinion, that we're actually basing decisions on the rule of law. So this is exactly what Canadians needed across the country because the amount of hopelessness people are feeling with all the, you know, information and the disinformation, Trudeau likes those two lines, by the way, um, that's coming forward, you know, is definitely weighing on Canadians. So this was the boost that we all needed. Uh, yesterday, um, Deputy Minister Christopher Freeland said, We respect very much Canada's independent judiciary. However, we do not agree with this decision and respectfully we will be appealing it i would just like to take a moment to remind canadians of how serious the situation was in our country when we took that decision the public safety of canadians was 
under threat. Very peaceful. Or national security. So much love. So much love unity. and unity. <laughs> I saw Canada come together and it was the first time in two years that I felt this is my Canada. This is where I grew up. This is where we belong. This is Canada. You. Uh, my name is Jeff Dip. I'm from uh, Chicken Smith, Saguenay. Uh, I'm here for freedom for my kids and the mandate. My name is Nancy. I've been the same as my husband. And honestly, if it would be Yelan, who I would bring my kids here? Think about it. It's like Canada Day every day. Yeah, exactly. Canada won against a tyrannical government policy and that'll inspire many other people around the world to keep going because they're trying for everything in the western world and we were the canary in the coal mine i'm sure along with you know australia and new zealand but we were one of the most tyrannical countries in the world you know when you saw uh, our government weaponize police against innocent civilians that stood up and showed no violence, had, um, you know, only uh, respect uh, for Canada and show up to, you know, disagree with what the government was saying. And then to be stomped in the manner that they were, all of us were that were there, um, really showed their hand, just what length they will go to uh, quell public opinion and public disorder. And, you know, it, you have to let them expose the tyrants that they are. If you don't want to get vaccinated, that's your choice. But don't think you can get on a plane or a train besides vaccinated people and put them at risk. Uh, I did not call people who were unvaccinated names. Those protesters who can, I don't even want to call them protesters, those anti-vaxxer mobs fringe element conspiracy theorists small fringe minority tinfoil hats qui croient pas dans la science qui sont souvent misogynes qui souvent racistes i wish i had said that differently there is no place in our country for threats violence i would say the lack of violent crime was shocking the rcmp judge that i did need to have rcmp with me just walking around my office faces right onto Wellington Street, and I had a front row seat to this convoy for the past few weeks. And I can say that in the last two years, I never felt safer walking home from my office at night. Like, imagine no one had been there. It was just this small young woman. I have never felt so safe. I am 4'11". I am a female walking here around, came up here by myself, and I, the sense of community is amazing. I get more support from these people than most of my own friends and family. It's disgusting. We invoked the Emergencies Act after we received advice from law enforcement. We had to invoke the Emergencies Act and we did so on the basis of non-partisan professional advice from law enforcement. He has repeatedly said the government acted on the advice of police, but the police say we never gave them the advice. And last night Bill Blair said, you know what, they never even asked for it. Um, it's the government's call. Straight up propaganda and lies. An Ottawa Police Services tweet. We hear your concern for people on the ground after the horses dispersed the crowd. Anyone who fell got up and walked away. We're unaware of any injuries. They just trampled that lady. They just fully trampled that lady. A bicycle was thrown at the horse further down the line and caused the horse to trip. The horse was uninjured. And then, of course, there was the Nazi and Confederate flag seen in the first couple of days and then never seen again. Uh, now he's going. Now he's gone. We called him out. He knows. He's going to hold his head in shame now. You know, include far right concerns. Have you guys felt at all in danger? No, nope, no. Nope. You know, as a matter of fact, I see people cleaning up the garbages. It's been a peaceful protest. Yeah, people are handing out food. They're handing out clothes. They're Everyone is excited. Water, you know, everything so that we need. There's nothing bad going on here. And then they talked about somebody, there was something with the war memorial, I believe it was urination. And I thought, wow, this should come on Canada Day when people are vomiting here, you know, from alcoholism, right? Um, how is it that this becomes 
the story, the message, when outside there's so much going on. There was so much partying going on. By 10 o'clock at night, when it's pitch black and it's gone from negative 30 to negative 40, CBC reporters are not idiots. It just sounds like that because they must have been ordered to have a predetermined direction in their story. The standard of journalism that I was required to work for, to work to, for 20 years was not being followed. It was an advocacy for a point of view. They electrified history. They electrified the world to spark this massive shift in the narrative. I mean, the mandates were brought down after that. March 9th, 2022, a look at Ontario's timeline for lifting all COVID measures. On March 14th, Vaccination policies will no longer be required in hospitals, long-term care homes, schools, and childcare settings. By March 21st, mask mandates will end in most places, including schools and childcare settings. And by April 27th, essentially all public health measures against COVID-19 will end. And on June 13th, 2022, Ottawa announced a suspension of vaccine mandates for domestic travel and federal employees. You know, the government will never say this, media will never say this, but it shows that the power is in the people, and it's not the people in power. You retired your boots from the Canadian Armed Forces, but you never gave up your service to Canadians and for freedom. Why is it such a deeply important thing for you? It, it, it's everything. I mean, think about it. Um, if you don't have freedom, you have nothing. 